Welcome to this web lecture on linking constraints, which is part of a series on mixed interlinear programming in transport. So, first of all, we're going to look into what linking constraints are, and secondly, we're going to look into how to model them. So first, let's remember what binary and integer decisions are, which are a key component if we look into linking constraints. So, for instance, an integer decision could be how many containers shall I transport? I don't want to transport half a container, but I could transport three or four containers, for instance. But also, the question, shall I buy a second barge, is an integer decision. So here, shall I buy a second barge? I can answer with yes and no which you can model as a one and a zero, which is also integers, but it's a special case, case because here we're looking at binaries. So let's look at the example that we've been looking at in the previous two videos. So a barge transports different indivisible goods K and K at revenues RK from Antwerp to Rotterdam. We have a barge capacity, so we can only transport, for instance, 40 containers. And loading one item of good K takes TK minutes. So for instance, it might take me two minutes to load this container, three minutes to load that container, but I have to turn over the barge within a time T. Now we tweak this model a little bit and we say, okay, we can uh, pay C for up to delta extra time. Now the specific thing here is I cannot just pay, let's say 1000 euros, and then I can use this port for the next three hours. But I can either pay 100 euros for the next 30 minutes, or I cannot pay. But I cannot pay, for instance, 200 euros to get the port for one hour, but I also cannot pay just 50 euros to only have it for 15 minutes. Either I pay for 30 minutes or I don't pay. So how are we tackling this? We're using the recipe for formulations that we've seen over and over. So we're identifying sets, parameters, and uh, decision variables, and then we're going to formulate constraints and the objective function. Since we don't want to reinvent the wheel, we're going to use the formulation for the mixed integer linear program that we've seen before. So this has K and K as the type of commodities, which is a set. We have the revenues, barge capacity, loading time, and turnover time as parameters, and we have the number of items shipped per commodity as a variable. What we have to add to the set of parameters is of course the overtime cost. So for instance, the 100 euros that we pay extra for additional 30 minutes. What we also have to add to the variables is uh, the usage of the extra loading time, why? So either we use it or we don't use it. Then we have the constraints, which for the most part stay the same. So we do not exceed capacity, we load everything within the turnover time, and we have integer shipment volumes. If we now load everything with a turnover time, we could also pay something, we could pay uh, C, to increase this to delta. So, but this only happens if we pay, so if our Y is 1, otherwise not. And then we also have our integer shipment volumes, which are called in domain restriction constraints, which in this case, we additionally have to ensure that Y is also either zero or one. So we have to add this to the domain restriction constraints, which are no, no longer all about integer uh, shipment volumes, but in general domain restriction constraints. And then we have our objective function, which used to be maximizing the shipment revenues, but now we add this second component, which is minus loading time costs. So, in general, we can have a lot of if clauses. So, if I operate a barge between Antwerp and Rotterdam, I can transport goods. If I do this, if I do that. So, for instance, now we say our variable here is z, z equals to 1. Then a barge goes from Antwerp to Rotterdam. If I do not operate this barge, then my z is zero, and then I cannot uh, transport everything. So, what we want to do here is that if our z is zero, then our x is also zero. If our x is greater than zero, then we want that z is one. Or, we want that one minus c times x is zero. So either one minus c is zero or x is zero. 
However, the latter constraint is very clearly not linear because we here have, we're multiplying two variables. The upper two are also not linear because we have this implication which is, which you can model in Gorovi, but it is nonlinear. So what we can do instead is we can use a big M. So what we're saying is X has to be less than or equal to some big M multiplied with the Z. So if Z is zero, then the right hand side becomes zero and the left hand side then also needs to be zero to make sure that this constraint holds. However, if Z is one, then the right hand side becomes a very big value, M, and then X uh, can, can take any value as long as it's less than M. This of course gives us some problems, which is setting the right M. So first of all, the right M obviously does not cut off any optimal solution. So let's just say we would set our M to one, then uh, the most that we can ship would be one, which is not really what we want. But then the other hand is as small as possible. And this has computational reasons. If our M is too big, then uh, it just takes us a lot longer time to solve this linear, this mixed integer linear program, which is not what we would like. So what uh, you're going to do is you're going to model those following constraints and determine the M that is as small as possible without cutting any off any optimal solution. So for instance, if a locomotive goes from Eindhoven to Amsterdam, it can pull up to seven carriages. If a truck drives from the depot to a supermarket, it can transport up to five tons of groceries. Or each ambulance at a depot can serve 480 minutes of calls each day. This is not actually an if constraint, but if you think about it, it's relatively simple to formulate that in a constraint that is very similar to an if. So what I would like you to take away from this um, web lecture on linking constraints is what integer and binary decisions are, what linking constraints are, what a big M is, and how to, uh, what I would like you to do is to model those linking constraints and setting the right big M for what we saw on the previous slide. Thanks.